Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another Star episode. Blaze. The Maiden's, the Maiden's Pearl. Pearl. I love the voice. When he learns of the Empire's struggle, Dimitri decides the time is right to strike. He moves swiftly to drive the Empire out, toppling one unfaithful Western Lord after another. Finally, he descends on Aryan Road, seat of Count Roe, the first Lord to betray him. Thus does Edelgard's army begin another grueling march to rescue a different Count. We've been here before. But we were in such a rush to rescue Lenato that we never got more than a glimpse of Aryan Road. Can't really appreciate the scale that quick. And now we're back to bail it out. If only Claude hadn't hatched his feudal scheme. We could have avoided all these needless battles and saved countless lives. Yet, in a more positive light, he handed us the perfect opportunity to show that not even the Alliance and Kingdom together can match the Empire's strength. Once we crush the army of Fargus, our superiority will be clear for all to see. And will that actually result in fewer casualties going forward? Because that is what would put Her Majesty's heart at ease. I will make no guarantees for matters beyond our control. So long as fanatics are willing to die for the Central Church, casualties are inevitable. Ah. Uh. We broke the Alliance's siege, and we can break the Kingdoms too! We're lucky it's a stronghold like Aryan Road that's under siege. It shouldn't be half the nail-biter we had to deal with last time. Yes, but last time Count Burglies was in command. For all we know, Count Roe will break like a twig and surrender the moment he hears the first soldier crest the hill. As I see it, we have two options. We can take a direct path for Aryan Road, or we can wait until we scatter the Kingdom troops that are fanned out in the north. It is a most vexing decision. As a professional at staying holed up, I think we should secure the perimeter first and get rid of as much danger as we possibly can. Time is important. We should be striking fast and hard. I actually have a choice in this matter. Um, I'm actually agreeing with Bernadetta. If we can, if we do a perimeter check. We can get rid of any surprises when we advance and attack the main thing so we don't get uh, dogpiled. So, that's how I see it. We're gonna have to deal with the North after we free Aryan Road anyway. So it makes sense to clear them out now and get it over with. Let's keep both options open and see how the situation unfolds. General Randolph. Yes, Your Majesty. I commend you for holding Aryan Road with what few soldiers you had. Thank you, Your Majesty. But I am unworthy of such praise when I failed to prevent the siege. Coordination with Count Roe proved difficult. It was all I could do merely to keep the enemy in check. That alone is commendable. A more foolish man would have rushed to glory and gotten himself and his underlings killed in the process. I have a key role for you in the coming rescue, General. I know you were up to the task. Of course, Your Majesty. My brother and I will give our all. Very good. But do not let your eagerness for victory come at the cost of lives. We have many more battles ahead and must conduct ourselves accordingly. Hey there, Edelgard. Leafing through documents, are we? This is new. Yeah, completely out of character, I know. But one of these reports has been stuck in my mind. Back
Back when Count Rill declared fealty to the Empire, other lords committed to doing the same, right? But the moment we left and the Kingdom Army marched south, they fell right back in line. It's like they never betrayed Fargus in the first place. Good memory. That's exactly what happened. Houses Elidor and Duval both made overtures to join the Empire. So why is the Kingdom welcoming them back without so much as a wrist slap? Is this another House Gloucester thing where the politics demand it? Seems like their importance as noble families outstrips the fact they're all two-faced liars. Politics are doubtless involved, but the heads of houses can change, as they did with Gloucester. We're not bound to place importance on any one individual, only the bloodline. So the Kingdom's aristocracy gets the same free pass as the Alliance's? Yes, and the Empire's as well, even though I do my best to treat everyone equally. I cannot afford to slight a minister's house, for example. They broke fealty to the former Prime Minister when they swore it to me. Would you call that treachery? What makes it different from the actions of Count Gloucester? Well, now that's an interesting set of answers. It really depends on ulterior motives. Greed makes it different, and I'd say betraying someone for money is lower than low. That's one way to look at it. I agree that what matters is the reason behind the change of heart. Was it for land? For status? To exact revenge or seize glory? Because I view a betrayal for any of those reasons to be utterly worthless. Yeah. Money and vengeance are pretty shallow motives. Well, that's why I'm here. I'm not talking about mercenaries. I'm talking about lords. Each of their decisions has the ability to upend the lives of thousands, if not more. Only a person with the character to realize that is truly fit to lead. I've worked for plenty of nobles in my time. Until now, I couldn't have cared less what it means to actually be one. But then you gave me responsibility over all of these soldiers, and it... Well, I guess I'm starting to see the world in a different way. And the people who live in it, too. I see. I admit, your grand designs sail clear over my head sometimes. Most of the time, actually. But that's why I stand by you. I feel like one of these days, something important's gonna rub off on me. And I feel the same. You've opened my eyes to all manner of things I might never have seen otherwise. You are a commoner without the fetters of a family name, wielding your sword directly for me. That's more valuable than you may realize. Oh, that's a lot. Right in the middle. Okay, so that was probably a bad idea to choose this one. What chapter am I on? What is that, eight? I think I'm halfway through the game, which is weird, because I'm sure we're going to be fighting um, the boss man, Dimitri, and then I think we're going to be fighting Rhea, which will leave six other chapters. Time to work you into shape. Maybe have one straight for Baylet, so that's five. What are we doing? Oh, 
Now I gotta get back on that. Um... Go for it, good sir. Gaze upon my splendid finery. What are we saying, Ferdinand? Ferdinand. Happy. Yep, go for it. Can't do the job without the outfit. Yeah, might as well. With proper training, you'll be unstoppable. Uh, whoops. This one? Yeah, okay. Put her back on this. I got a lot of things going on here. Iron. I want this one. Do I? Yeah. Gonna have to go update, upgrade those. Time to work. Training time. What do we got? Remove all. Okay, let's have Ferdinand and Happy work together. Let's have Bernadetta and Edelgard work together. Says and Petra. Do I have another warlock? That's a bishop. Bishop. I don't know who's who. Hey, two warlocks. I guess I can do Manuela and Marianne. Balthus and Caspar? Yes. We're gonna have bonuses here. So let's see. We've definitely got some work to do. A new power is now being mine. Okay. Again. We did well, naturally. Even a mule will eventually reach its destination. I think I'm getting the hang of this. I think I should turn this down a bit. Hey, anything that makes me stronger. Again. Training together isn't always easy. Wait to get back out there. Okay, so it looks like I'm gonna have to change this one up. Yeah, might as well. Seen worse. Hope the 
this is good for something. This will help me break new boundaries. Again. So I am to train with you, hmm? My, will I even survive this encounter? You don't have to patronize me. I am not the blood-crazed lunatic you are. <laughs> oh dear God, these two. I see the merits in our training together. I need more strength. Adel Guard and Bernadetta. Training can be the difference. With proper training, you'll be unstoppable. Yep, well, we're going to do all supports after. Okay, so next we're heading to the kitchen. Hunger is the true enemy. Okay, so what do we got? This one. Who do we have? You know what? Let's do Baltus and Happy. Yeah, the flavor's not really there. Might want to try something different next time. Hey, my favorite! Wait, for me? Okay. Come back whenever you're hungry. Hunger is the true enemy. Now let's see if I can get the pluses. Not the pluses, the ups. Oh, don't have meatballs. I need a tomato. No? I'll use this one. Uh, I guess I will do Linhard and Dorothea. Noise. This is great. For me? Oh, yes. <laughs> That's okay. So I got the four. Back whenever you're hungry. I know there's another Hunter's one the that enemy. I think has a experience. Weapon durability. Ooh. Ooh. I just realized there's more of these. Okay. Guess I'll do this one. Good Marianne. And Ignat. Sure, why not? Iggy and Mary. Solid. So I'm surprised you know what I like. Thank you. This is wonderful. This is one of my favorites. Come back whenever you're hungry. Okay, looks Hunger like I got two more. Enemy. Okay, the jerk. Ooh, I got two more of these things to do. Greatly fills it. You know what? Screw it. Go for it. Petra. And Caspar, why not? Yeah, the f that actually looks good. This surprise pleases me. How did you know I would have enjoyment of this? Oh, this looks great. I'm going to demolish this puppy for sure. Come back whenever you're hungry. And what's the final Hunger one? Hunger is the true enemy. Weapon durability slightly, somewhat reduced, somewhat fills. Warrior gauge. I want this one. That'd be nice.
slightly reduced or some let's do somewhat reduced. Hey look at that, Edelgard and Monica. Solid, solid. I'm glad it is not just you and me alone, Your Majesty. Or else I would be reduced to a blubbering idiot. Well, I'm certainly glad we avoided that. Although, does that mean you're a blubbering idiot all the other times we're alone? Ouch. Come back whenever you're hungry. Okay. Let's check out what I got for supports. Looks like I'm not the first one to show up. Hello there. No need to pay me any mind. I'll just be absorbed in my book here. I assume you've come to meet someone? As they've clearly not arrived yet, why don't you join me? Here. I, uh, thanks. Hey, Linhart, you're into all that spooky magic stuff, right? Like sorcery and crests and whatnot? Spooky magic. Yes. Why? Is there something you'd like to ask me? Oh, no. I was just thinking it's kind of weird that you've never really been interested in my power. Do you want me to be? Yeah, I mean, I don't even understand it myself. But with you helping me, I might actually learn something. Pat and Hubert scared me half to death talking about how you might experiment on me. Just so we're clear, I'm not into that. Uh-huh. Well, not everything piques my interest. Your circumstances simply do not. If you're not interested, then so be it. But is there any particular reason why? Hard to say. Perhaps because a sword is the only thing you're able to manifest? Strictly speaking, I suppose your power does raise some questions. But that sinister weapon of yours, it just doesn't leave me all that interested in learning more. Sinister, huh? That's one way to describe it. Tell me. Have you ever beheld one of the hero's relics? They also possess the most peculiar aura. And yet, there's something almost divine about the terror they instill. But your sword? It's cold. Maybe even inhuman. In more complex terms, it's little more than an inorganic, dispassionate construct. Not a hint of the goddess's divine guidance in its design. It's not as if you were able to choose what you manifested, right? It just came to you. True. But what if I could turn it into something else and start manifesting different things? Would you be interested then? Is such a thing possible? I would like to see that for myself, I must admit. In fact, I'd be quite excited by that. What a fascinating topic to lay at my feet. <laughs> it was just a suggestion. I have no idea if I can actually do it. But aren't you the one who brought it up? What else we got? Oh, hey, Happy. You sure like the outdoors, huh? I guess you could say that. Probably because I grew up in a forest. Or maybe it's because I was forced to live in Abyss all that time. Oh, that's right. You were at Garrig Mach too. I wasn't there for very long, but I never would have guessed there was a whole town hiding just below my feet. Well, it was. I should know. What about you, though? What did you do before hopping into the mercenary business? Before that? Oh, well. I lived with my mom in a village deep in the mountains. Feels like forever ago now. 
Oh, I call her my mom, but we weren't actually related. She was more like a foster parent. So what was she like? I don't suppose she was interested in magical research, was she? I don't know about research, but yeah, she knew how to use magic. Interesting. How did you two end up living together? I don't really know the details. I can't remember anything from before I was with her. Apparently, I was a foundling. Sadly, finding a starving, abandoned child isn't that uncommon. But for her to take me in and raise me as her own, I think my mom was someone special. Yeah, I guess. She was probably a good person. Something on your mind, Happy? I was just wondering why someone who could use magic was living in a remote mountain village. You know, someone told me one time that she wasn't actually from there. But when I asked her about it, she just gave me this sad smile. Hmm. Very interesting. Seriously, Happy, what's going on? Does it have something to do with my mom? No, it's nothing. Sorry to bring it up. I was just letting my imagination get the better of me. Sorry if I upset you, really. I'm fine, don't worry about it. No big deal. Besides, I'm sure you had your reasons, right? If you ever feel like talking about it, I'm always here. Thanks. Just some old demons of mine. Happens to the best of us. Don't sweat it. You want to head back and get something to eat? Sure. Oh, and we can pick some berries on the way. I think I saw some a little bit ago. What kind? After all my time in the mountains, I'm something of a berry expert myself. That's sweet. Oh god, there's so many. I don't know if I'm going to have a battle this round. Oh, what a lovely breeze. Truly, there is nothing so liberating as the great outdoors. Your Majesty, Hubert is looking for you. My apologies. I didn't realize you were resting. I only stepped out for a bit of fresh air. I'll be ready to return shortly. Oh no! Please don't rush back on my account. I am more than happy to keep Hubert occupied in the meantime. Please, Your Majesty, enjoy yourself. I'll simply tell him I failed to find you. Ah, and are you cold? I can bring you a coat and some hot tea. I, I appreciate the concern, Monica, but I'm quite all right. <sighs> but while you're here, there is something I must tell you. Why are you staring at me, Your Majesty? Is there something on my face? I was only going to say how fortunate we are to have you with us. Those who slither in the dark had you in their clutches. In another world, we might have lost you to them forever. Yes, it seemed they were only keeping me alive so they could use me for some kind of dark ritual. And I can only assume that would not have ended with me alive and well. You saved my life. I wish I could express what an honor it was to be personally rescued by the woman I've dedicated my entire life to. That's kind of you to say, but I only did it because I needed the military leverage. That doesn't matter. I'm serious when I say that the day you rescued me was the day I stopped simply idolizing you and decided you were the one for me. The one for you? Yes. You risked your life to protect a lowly noble like me. You need to understand the situation, Monica. I was fully prepared to sacrifice you if doing so would bring me even one step closer to achieving my goals. 
I had no intention of rescuing you until right before the opportunity presented itself. Oh, but, um, why not? I was under the impression that those who slither in the dark needed you quite badly. And as I required their strength to wage my war, I was prepared to look the other way. When we laid out our plans, your death was something we took as a given. All the same, you still chose to save me in the end. I don't care how you got to that decision, only that you did. You could have offered me up as a bargaining chip, but you chose not to. Instead, you closed that door just so I could be standing here today. Monica, I... I only get one life, and I can't tell you how lucky I am to share it with you. It is my destiny to walk beside you, and that makes me happier than you could ever know. Well, thank you. That Laying means a lot. on it a little thick, aren't you, Monica? Someone's a Yandere. Oh, there you are, Hubert. I have been searching everywhere for you. And to what end? Has Her Majesty summoned me? Oh, she would never use me for a task like that. I just wanted to thank you, albeit reluctantly. I do not recall having done anything that would merit such a sincere display of gratitude. Well, you probably just saw it as part of your normal administrative duties. You fixed quite a big mistake in my last report before Her Majesty had the chance to look at it. I woke up in a panic when I realized what I had done. Imagine how mortified I was to see you'd already corrected everything. Ah, yes. I may have done something of the sort. As Her Majesty's loyal servant, it is my duty to pare down the number of unnecessary matters which wander across her desk. I must say, I was surprised to see you make such a foolish and obvious error. Have you truly grown so lax, even as you style yourself the greatest of our Emperor's retainers? I'm aware of the mistake I made, but I would never dream of calling myself something like that. Well, perhaps I said it once or twice in the heat of the moment, but I never actually meant it. If anyone is Her Majesty's best retainer, it's you. And without House Vestra's say-so, I could never become one of her servants. At present, I very much doubt you are fit to serve as Her Majesty's servant. Excuse me? <laughs> it is true that I did not make a conscious choice to serve Her Majesty at first. Instead, I simply did it because my father decreed it must be so. But such bounds no longer define our relationship. I do not serve the Emperor. My loyalty is to Lady Edelgard and her alone. I stand with her in a manner that goes beyond the bounds of ruler and servant. Do you understand this? I want to be like that with Her Majesty as well. But I am only the child of a baron, so I don't have excuses to linger in the palace all the time. I have to return to my family's estate once I've fulfilled my duties for the day, and I get summoned back to our territory often. I am not like you. I cannot just be at her side unless I have a good reason to be there. Indeed. Fox territory is in the far west of the Empire. I surmise you have had to spend much of your time away from Enbar. Furthermore, you will be a Baron one day. Your duties will prevent you from dedicating yourself solely to Her Majesty. Exactly. Unlike you, I have an entire territory's worth of people to protect. But I still won't give up. Even from afar. No. 
precisely because I'll be afar. There will be things I can do to protect Her Majesty. In fact, always being at her side might actually cause you to overlook threats from time to time. I may even serve Her Majesty in a way you never could. <laughs> that is a promising thought, Monica. That almost sounded like a threat. Yeah, I think we're good. Let's see how this map looks. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh. Well. Might as well. Let's do this one. There you are, Hubert. So what's going on? This couldn't wait for a more reasonable hour? <laughs> you are the last to arrive. But better late than never, I suppose. I may be late, but I'm also smart enough to smell trouble when it's brewing. And you've definitely got something on the boil. Please illuminate me. How have you come to this conclusion? Because I'm standing here with Yuritsa on one side and Petra on the other. And you don't invite people like them along unless you need serious muscle. It saddens me that I am not included in this toughness calculation of yours. Neither fighting or hunting have toughness for me. I am fighting and others are falling. It is a thing of ease. Get on with it. Yes, well, setting the question of toughness aside, your task remains the same. Can you please just get to the point already? I'm gonna doze off if you stretch this intro out any longer. Then I will do just that. I have received information regarding a small-scale raid on Garrig Mach. The raiders in question are the Knights of Saros, but judging by their low numbers, they are not attempting to reclaim the monastery. Rather, their goal is assassination. Specifically, they seek to eliminate Count Varley, the current head of the Southern Church. The Knights. Good. I'll enjoy this. I have knowledge of stopping assassins. Let us be going with all haste. I see why you brought the three of us along now. But still, you've got an entire army at your disposal. Why are you so small a force? If we suddenly increase our presence at Garrig Mach, the Knights will realize they have been found out and cancel the raid. But I need them to carry out their plan to the letter, so they might walk right into my trap. They will be like flies to the flame. Not sure that's right, but I get what you're going for. Even if the flies are strong, it all ends the same. You both remain as inspiring as ever. Now then, as we will be heading out tomorrow, we had best get our preparations settled quickly. Seeing as you are a long-tenured mercenary of some renown, I will leave the guarding of Count Varley's person to you. I hope it goes without saying that this is not a job which calls for improvisation on your part. Keep him safe and whole, and do it well. I mean, you talk like I'm the world's greatest mercenary, but I'm really just another sellsword. <laughs> Pathetic. If such is truly the case, why did Her Majesty see fit to elevate you to your current station? Huh. Yeah, okay. A fair point. If you fight with confidence, you will never be losing. I will do what I must. 
Again, get on with it. Yes, yes, very well. Now, as far as Garrick Mark's current military capability... Protect Varley. Well, these are the ones I have to deal with. This will be fun. Why bring me from the monastery and Okay, so We've got to head into the outer courtyard. Is this really safe? Perfectly so. Provided you remain close. What's happening? It's the church. They've come for me. Strange. We had no reports of any excursions. Well, no matter. Our target is Count Farley. Hurry up and deal with them. The future of the Empire itself depends upon my survival. Oh, Bernadette is cat is an idiot. For now. To go without saying, but for now, we need Count Varley. Do not let any harm come to the man. <laughs> Majesty's banishment of the Central Church. As bishop, he gave legitimacy to a course of action. An action that carried great weight with adherence of the faith. This is our best chance to eliminate this false bishop. We must succeed. I've got you now. Okay. Assassins every day. I had to be learning with much quickness. Everybody up. I've got you now. But nice. Take you it's not over. As the goddess is my witness, this is as far as you go. Our lives matter not. Crush them in the name of the Archbishop. Oh, 
I feel nothing. Is this all the knights could muster? It is a small raiding party. Likely they sent only what they could afford to lose. Still, I doubt that was the last. I got you now! Find that sword thing. Ah, there you are. Where are you going? Going, Barley. We should be safe here. I hope. There's the dog. Don't let him escape. No, not again. I can't take another step. You'll have to stop them here. Everybody. Everybody up. I've got you now. They are not finished. Remain on guard. They're okay. few in number, but well prepared. News of our raid must have leaked. Shamir. They make me sick. Catherine. Still, looks like the two of us will have to pull this one out. Well. Gotta take these guys up first, because Samir and Catherine are probably gonna whip our ass. I don't know when they were gonna make their appearance. You know what? I'm glad for this. We've never had a chance to really go at each other before. Thunder Catherine. Today is improved. Aren't you the princess of Bridget? Who served the Empire? I am serving Bridget. And Bridget is standing with 
the Empire. One down. Here and stop these guys. I've got you now. Grab this on my way out. Now to go find those two. Anything. Are you really willing to die for this guy? Gee, a cracker. Followed. Didn't even realize you followed me. Inside and never setting foot outside the monastery again. I see where Bernadetta gets it from. Still, at least the guy's safe now. For now. Sorry, editor Macy on it, so if you heard it kick on. S ranked. War feeds my body and inconsequential. To kill. I must make the most of this ability. Killer bow, short axe. Lots of money. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and end it here. Uh, we're going to be busting out a bunch of these missions left and right in the next we couple episodes. We finished the cleanup and inspection of the walls, sir. We also cleared out the knights of Saros's base at the foot of Garrick Mach. The enemy has been routed and is now engaged in a full retreat. Well done. That should keep us secure for the time being. Still, you will want to remain vigilant, Count. But you just said we are secure! True. I do not expect our enemy to launch any military offenses in the near future. But if not military, ah, uh, of course. Care to let the rest of us in on your little secret? 
No. I mean only that the enemy will not soon attack using pure military might. However, I fully expect them to continue making attempts on Count Varley via less virtuous means. Disguising themselves as merchants or the like, and then driving a blade between his ribs, for example. I shudder to think of those zealots out for my blood. I entreat you to protect me, Baron Barnabas. After all, I won't always have the Minister of the Imperial Household here to save me. The war has reached a critical stage, and his wisdom will soon be needed elsewhere. As steward of Garrig Mark, my life is in your hands. I will do what I can, of course. To start, I want you to confirm the identity of every single person entering and leaving the monastery. Also, the gatekeeper must hear of these new attempts on my life and ensure he keeps his watch most keen. That one is far too casual for my liking. Yes, well, enough of this. I must be off. Of course, Count Varley. Weird guy, huh? Stronger than he looks, though not inclined to fight. He has reminded me of certain woodland creatures. Though he is a fighter of much weakness, he has a talent for remaining alive. When you put it like that, he comes off like some sort of mastermind. But I guess all Imperial nobles are crafty in some way or another. Crafty, is it? Hmm. Sure. I mean, the two of you are nobles, and I'd say you're as cunning as they come. Yes. Hubert and Yuritsa are both nobles full of cleverness. Don't forget to include yourself among that number. After all, I specifically selected the craftiest soldiers I could think of for this mission. When the enemy is neck deep in skullduggery, I need soldiers who are adept at thinking on their feet. You think I'm like you? Really? That's great! Only a jest, I assure you. But since it clearly pleases you so, I must admit, there was some truth behind it. Good. Glad we got that settled. I tire of this. Farewell. He sure knows how to make an exit. We should be going as well. It lacks wisdom to be far from the base for too long. But if you wish to be joining me for a small hunt, we will be passing through woodlands on the way back. Sure, if it's on the way. This is filling me with happiness. We will be landing a nice catch, then return home. Maybe a bear or a boar. Yeah, that's not really what I'd call a small hunt. <laughs> Petra? Hey, wait up! <laughs> it seems we truly are a crafty group, after all. Still, facing Catherine and Shamir time and again is a great burden to bear. But I must shoulder it if I am to protect Her Majesty. Okay. That's where I will end it. Um, I want to thank you guys for watching. Uh, hopefully you'll be back in the next episode to see more. But for now, thank you. And have a good day.